tempo or repetition duration. And, and is 2-2 two, two slow enough? And the reason I bring up 2-2 two, two is I, I, I'm pretty sure I've seen it in a research paper, a couple of research papers you, you've been involved with recently, but yeah. that was the tempo. So I'm, I'm just intrigued as, as to your thoughts around that. Yeah, so um, around this, you know, we have recently published, uh, along with Luke Carlson, uh, colleagues at Discover Strength, a paper looking at repetition duration. Um, and one of the issues with the literature around repetition duration has been that um, it often does not match for load or time under load. Um, and so, you know, a lot of the differences that are seen in some studies but not others might be because of differences in load or time under load between the conditions as well, not just because um, repetition duration specifically has been manipulated. So we tried to address that in that study where we looked at a more traditional kind of 2-1-3 uh, two, one, uh, two, kind of rep duration uh, versus 10-10 versus a 30-30-30. And in that specifically, we didn't find any differences between the conditions uh, with respect to strength outcomes. Um, we also looked at uh, some other outcomes as well, which didn't, including body composition and uh, blood glucose, which didn't really change so much. Um, but taking that data, taking into account the other data that we have around repetition duration, um, there are studies that have used um, you know, repetition durations as, as fast as 1-1, um, um, or even you know, maximal intention uh, to move, uh, maximal, maximal intended velocity. Um, the key thing is that what we find is when participants train to failure, you see very, very similar adaptations, irrespective of the repetition duration leading up to that point of momentary failure. Um, and so from my perspective, I think if you're talking purely about what impact will it have upon um, adaptations when we're talking about strength, um, uh, hypertrophy, um, endurance, for example, that the repetition duration um, makes very little difference. Mm. When we're looking at other outcomes, though, such as um, what people you know, refer to as power, uh, more kind of technically correct is impulsivity. Uh, you know, the, the, uh, there is potentially an influence of repetition duration, but not necessarily the actual repetition duration, but the intended repetition duration. Um, so there was a fantastic study by Dave Bem uh, from Newfoundland University in Canada uh, back in the early 90s where they looked at um, comparing actual and intended uh, velocities of movement. Um, and found that the, uh, the key thing um, that influenced the kind of power or impulsivity type adaptations was the intention to move fast, not the actual uh, speed of movement. Um, so in that case, they were using, for example, isometrics and asking people to actually try and explosively move against them. Even though they weren't actually moving, they developed um, the kind of power-related outcomes to a similar degree as uh, those conditions that were actually permitted to move quickly. Um, uh, I've got a little bit of a speculation around this, and I'd love for either us, uh, if we have time, or someone else to do a study around this, because I've noticed that um, some uh, trainers, for example, will coach their uh, participants to attempt to speed up during the set of repetitions as they fatigue. Mm -hmm. um, so one thing we do know, and there's actually a lot of research around this, is that if you are attempting to move as fast as you can, as you fatigue, your actual rep, uh, velocity of movement will reduce. Um, and it's quite a good marker of fatigue. Um, so, if you were to start a set of repetitions at a slow repetition duration, or a long repetition duration, and then as you start to fatigue, you get the participant to, or the client to attempt to go quicker, but they can't go quicker because the fatigue is not allowing them to. I wonder whether that would both maximize the kind of theoretically the safety of the exercise because that's one of the arguments obviously around repetition duration is is you know if you get the same adaptations and maybe slower is safer mm -hmm. um, but also allow you to maximize the kind of more power impulsivity related adaptations because towards the end of the set you're trying to move as fast as you can and facilitating the underlying kind of adaptations in the nervous system that um, enable you to kind of do that still to be tested though